하는 거 보고 So I'm back to make my second ASMR video I decided to use this book Another book which my wife bought for me Last Christmas, this one I've read through most of this book myself already um, And I really enjoyed it But I thought it would be good for ASMR purposes because it's got some nice graphics and pictures and whatnot. So I thought I would just share it with you. I hope everyone had a lovely new year. Happy new year for 2023 to all of you. I hope it's good to everyone. I'm going to make it a good one for myself. Migrations, a history of where we all come from, with a foreword by David Olusoga. Limited at Penguin, a random house company. I uh, never knew what DK stood for until right now. So, as you can see, it's broken down into chronological periods. So, prehistory, the first migrations, circa 2600 BCE to 375 CE, the ancient empires. Then 375 CE to 1400 CE, the transcontinental contact. and diasporas and I believe that's us Vietnamese refugees bought the USS Montague from a French landing ship at Haiphong in 1954 at the beginning of the Vietnam War the forward. forward. Migration is one of the biggest stories in all of human history and a phenomenon that is set to shape the world in the 21st century. It began over 100,000 years ago when our human ancestors first emerged in Africa and it was through migration that humans came to occupy most of the world with migrant communities making epic journeys across land and dangerous voyages over the great oceans in simple wooden ships and boats. As migration has always been part of the human story, we live in a world that has been shaped by it in multiple ways. Languages, cultures and religions have been transmitted across the world by migration brought by both refugees and colonisers who built empires. Many of the foods we now grow and eat became part of our diets after they were introduced by migrants. Across the world, millions of, pe millions of people have ancestors who, at one time or another, were migrants, while millions live in nations like the United States and Australia that were founded by migrants outnumbered the indigenous people 
and strip them of their land. Migration is so old and so vast a story that it is a background reality to our world. There are aspects of history that are not always recognised as stories of migration and yet the resettlement of people was fundamental to them. The Industrial Revolution that began in England in the 18th century marked the beginning of one of the most important forms of migration, the movement of people from the countryside to the cities. By the middle of the 1900s, Britain had become the first country in which more people lived in the cities than the countryside. In recent decades, almost 500 million people in China have made the same journey from rural villages to urban centres. Today, the majority of the world's population live in cities. As this book reveals, not all global migrations were voluntary. The Atlantic slave trade and the trades in enslaved Africans across the Sahara Desert and the Indian Ocean were amongst the greatest crimes against humanity ever committed. They can also be seen as part of a wider trend in forced migra of forced migration. After slavery was brought to an end, the British Empire encouraged thousands of people from India to travel huge distances to do the work once carried out by enslaved Africans and later to build new railway lines. Chinese people, were also, Chinese people also became migrant workers in the empires built by the European nations. Many migrations have led to the displacement and then involuntary migration of indigenous people. For example, the European colonists who created new settlements in North America forced indigenous people to migrate, sometimes to reservations, their original homelands given over to new settlers. Today, many nations rely upon migrant, migrants as workers and without them their economies could not properly operate. Many of those migrants retain strong ties to their countries of origin and millions of them regularly send money back to members of their family who still live in the countries from which they migrated. These payments are called remittances. For some of the world's poorer countries, remittances represent a large proportion of their national income. In the 21st century, migrants leave their countries of origin for many of the same reasons that people have always left, to find work and better lives f and build better lives for themselves and their families, or to escape from wars and conflicts. However, a new form of climate migration has started to change migration patterns. As the climate of the world starts to change, with sea levels rising and farmlands and farmland in parts of the world becoming too dry to support crops and animals, Millions of people are at a risk of losing their homes and their livelihoods. Migration and climate change are becoming ever more interconnected and climate migration may well shape the future of our world. David Orosoga and just flick through and pick different pages that I feel like reading. So I'm not going to stop and read everything. I'll let you have a look at the pictures. Homo erectus, the first humans to leave Africa, used tools and fire. This first Australian walker dates back to 50,000 years ago. That's a long time ago. Ancient migrants are depicted in sand rock paintings. The Sea Peoples battle the Egyptians under Ramesses II.
first humans migration out of Africa. Our earliest, earliest ancestors, collectively known as hominins, originated in eastern Africa around 6 to 7 million years ago, when the hominin lineage diverged, diverged from that of chimpanzees to walk upright on two legs. The process was very gradual. Early hominins, I have no idea how to pronounce that, Sahelanthropus, Sahelanthropus, Ororin and Ardipithecus were still ape-like. They lived mainly in trees and had a grasping foot, but their skeletons show they may also have walked upright. A 28 metre long trail of footprints left in volcanic ash in Lyatola, Tanzania 3.6 million years ago revealed a species that walked upright most of the time, although given its long forearms, fingers and toes, it probably did not walk far and still climbed trees. It was identified as Australopithecus afarensis, like Brackets like the skeleton named Lucy, found in Ethiopia. Close brackets. Venturing beyond Africa. By around 1.8 million years ago, the fully terrestrial Homo erectus had evolved in Africa. Among the evidence for this is the fossil of Turkana boy, dating to 1.6 million years ago, found in Kenya. The body proportions are more like those of a modern human, with elongated legs and shorter arms, which meant this species could walk further than its ancestors. It also had a larger brain and used tools. Unlike its predecessors, Homo erectus travelled beyond the continent, possibly in search of food or as environmental conditions changed. They migrated to the Middle East, reaching modern-day Jordan by 1.1 to 1.4 million years ago. From there, they moved into China and Indonesia. Until the 1940s, archaeologists believed that Homo erectus evolved into our species, Homo sapiens, in different regions of the world at the same time. However, Experts now believe that Homo sapiens evolved first in Africa about 300,000 years ago and then migrated in waves, supplanting other ancestral species. Brackets that the out of Africa theory. Close brackets. The first of these migrations dates to 100 to 200,000 years ago. These early pioneers went northeast along the coast from modern day Israel to Syria. However, this wave appears to have died out. A second wave took place about 60,000 years ago, probably along a southern route via modern-day Yemen. Everyone outside Africa is a descendant of those who left in this second wave. At the time of these migrations, Homo sapiens still shared the planet with other home human species, Neanderthals, who had evolved in Europe and Asia, and Denisovans, who had settled around 400,000 years ago in Siberia, and then spread south into Southeast Asia and Melanesia. Both these species interbred in due course with Homo sapiens. Our common ancestor. Scientists can trace the evolution and movement of human groups from common elements in their DNA passed down through many generations. Mitochondrial DNA passed down through passed down only through the female lines indicates that every human alive today shares DNA from one female ancestor who lived in southern Africa about two hundred thousand years ago. Nicknamed mitochondrial DNA my, pardon me, nicknamed mitochondrial Eve she is not our only ancestor, be it, but she is related to all of us. That's a, a map showing what it was talking of. So migration from Africa 
by Homo sapiens may have followed the routes shown in this map according to genetic and archaeological evidence. So coming from Eastern Africa and either going south via Yemen and on into Asia or the northern route that they think died out and they went up to Israel. Most people outside of Africa that are alive today come from this foot path that went along. I remember hearing a story about there are a species of birds that are now somewhere here. <laughs> I don't know exactly where. And the Brahmin. Brahmi and Dean, they chant, no, they chant these particular chants that have been passed down through oral history. And when scientists recorded them, they were able to match them with these birds that are here now. But they believe that at one point, humanity and these birds both lived in the same region. And that's why the Brahmins picked up on the birds' chants and they, they began to copy it and if they, they took it down to southern India and the birds have since migrated north I don't know if that made sense the way I explained that but I find it fascinating so up here is an example of the footprints that were found footprint, footprints found at Lyatola Lytoli, Tanzania, are the earliest signs that ancestral species moved through the landscape on two legs by the Pyle Pleistocene era. Pyle Pleistocene era, over three million years ago. That's one of the first examples of an upright species of hominin footprint. And this is This illustration of an early of early Homo sapiens is based on the three hundred thousand year old fossils found at Jebel Urhud in Morocco. Mitochondrial Eve lived in Africa, so in many ways, so in a very real way, we are all Africans, according to Desmond Tutu in his The Book of Forgiving in two thousand and fourteen. Marching men were painted on rocks by the San peoples of the Drakensberg Mountains in southern Africa around 3,000 3, years ago. The San are shown are showing migrating, migrating eastwards to the coast to hunt for food and resources during the winter. to a new world. <coughs> Peopling the Americas. 
for millions of years, the Americas remained unpopulated. Their geographical isolation meant our homo sapien ancestors could only settle there once they had reached eastern Siberia, where Malta mammoth hunters established themselves around 25,000 years ago. At that time, the Laurentian and Cordillerian glaciers, which covered most of North, North America, locked up so much water that sea levels were 90 metres lower than today, creating a land bridge between Asia and North America. Known as Beringia, this bridge allowed migration across what is now a broad expanse of water. Although a bleak, treeless plain, it was home to herds of large herbivores, such as mammoth, mastodon and caribou, which attracted hunting bands eastward. Crossing Beringia The date of the first crossing is unclear. A long-standing hypothesis that the first settlers belonged to the Clovis culture, named after a site in New Mexico which thrived from 11,500 to 11,000 years ago, has been challenged by recent evidence of an earlier migration. Artifacts, including biface stone blades found at Bluefish Cave in Yukon, brackets which dates from 12 to 15,000 years ago, those brackets suggest an earlier crossing of Beringia. Radiocarbon dating of sediment from the seafloor of the Bering Strait has shown that the land bridge was open during a period of glaciation from 25,000 to 18,000 years ago. It then opened again for several thousand years during the next glacial period from 15,000 years ago. Once across, small bands of humans may have pushed inland through gaps in the ice sheet and along the coast in search of shellfish and other marine resources. Their, their movement southwards appears to have been relatively rapid. A site at Pedra Furada in northwestern Brazil has yielded pieces of stone tools more than 12,000 years old. There is also evidence at Monte Verde too, a site in southern Chile, that humans occupied a cave as long as 14,500 years ago, where they made small fireplaces, built wooden shelters, gathered seaweed, and ate paleo camelids, an ancestor of the llama and alpaca. The Clovis culture. By around 11,500 years ago, members of the Clovis culture were in North America. Their relationship with previous settlers is unclear, and they may represent a new wave of migration, but like their predecessors, Clovis peoples almost certainly came from East Asia. This theory is reinforced by recent research, which has linked DNA haplogroups found in Siberia with those of indigenous Americans and by linguistic analysis showing parallels between the main indigenous language groups in the Americas and languages spoken in Siberia. Genetics also reveal a clear link between the Clovis peoples who adapted to the extreme climate changes and the disappearance of large mammals on which they relied for food to indigenous populations in North, Central and South America today. The Bering Land Bridge allowed ancient peoples to cross easily from Asia to North America. Some may also have followed the coastline arriving on the continent by boat. So travelling from Siberia to the North American continent. And that was the bit what was the Bering Land Bridge here and there's now the Bering Strait here, which is a an expanse of water separating the two continents. So they believe that people when they 
they came in the first place, they hugged the coastline because there would have been pockets in between the ice sheets where they could have survived and then they've made their way south via those pockets. The picture here is this flint spear point made around 11,000 BCE is a type is of a type used by members of the Clovis culture. More than 10,000 of these points have been found in North America alone. A Stone Age hunter arriving at the borders of the Bering Land Bridge would have had no idea they were gazing at a natural highway into a new continent. That's a quote from Brian Fagan in The Great Journey on the peopling of ancient America from 1987. This woman is Lamaher de las Palmas who lived 10 to 12,000 years ago, was found in a cave near Tulum, Mexico in 2006. Reconstructions of her appearance supported theories that early migrants to America may have come from as far away as Asia. Archer, whose grave was found near Stonehenge, England, is an important example of people from abroad bringing the Beaker culture to Britain. Buried alongside pottery, the remains are over 4,000 years old and analysis suggests that he grew up in the Alps. I'm just hovering over each page just so that if you feel like pausing to read it, you can. Alright, so around the Fertile Crescent Ancient Near East. The advent of agriculture in the Near East and North Africa around 10,000 BCE encouraged people to form the first fixed settlements. As agriculture, as agricultural surpluses accumulated, societies became more stratified and complex, with rigid hierarchies headed by temple priests, nobles and kings. This more sedentary lifestyle did not, however, mean people stopped moving. Instead, as villages became towns, then city-states, and finally empires, communities sought to acquire more lands, sending their peoples to settle them, often displacing those already there. In turn, the wealth of these new states attracted nomadic outsiders eager to control their resources. Near Eastern Empires The walls of Jericho, built around 8000 BCE, are a first sign of tensions between settled peoples and newcomers. Early cities in Mesopotamia Brackets, Western Asia, close brackets, such as Uruk, built around 4500 BCE by the Sumerians, 
themselves probably migrant migrants from an unknown location were also attractive to migrating peoples in search of somewhere to settle. In time, one group, the Akkadians, overwhelmed Sumeria in 2350 BCE, only for their leader, Sargon, to establish his own more wide-ranging empire that extended into Syria. Around 2000 BCE, Sumeria was devastated again by a new group of nomads, the Amorites, moving north from Arabia. Despite the efforts of rulers such as King Shusin of Ur, who built a defensive wall against them known as the Repeller of the Amorites, ancient Egypt, whose civilization was probably established by peoples moving east to escape from desertification of the previously fertile Sahara from around 6000 BCE was initially successful at keeping outsiders at bay. Then around 1650 BCE it succumbed to an invasion by the Hyksos brackets, invaders who spoke a western Semitic language and may have originated in modern day Syria or Lebanon, close brackets, who conquered much of northern and Egypt and ruled it for over a century. War and deportation. When the Near East recovered from the, the collapse caused by the Sea Peoples, the new empires that emerged from 900 BCE continued to experience waves of migration but they also employed forced migration as a policy. The Assyrians, who built an empire based at Nineveh, brackets, near modern-day Mosul in Iraq, close brackets, used this to brutal effect. In 689 BCE, their ruler, Sargon II, destroyed the ancient city of Babylon and deported its people to other Assyrian provinces. Babylon, once rebuilt, became the new home of the Jewish people, exiled to Babylonian captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar II after he destroyed Jerusalem in 597 BCE following a revolt. The Jews only returned to Jerusalem when the Persian king Cyrus I gave them the right to rebuild the Jewish temple there after he took Babylon in 538 BCE. His policy, his policy of tolerance across the Achaemenid, Achaemenid Empire's 20 provinces achieved a balance between ethnic groups which, for a time, quelled the cycle of migration and invasion that had plagued the Near East for centuries. So as was mentioned, uh, the Sea Peoples, so confederations of sea bomb peoples attacked the coastal states of the Mediterranean around 1300 BCE. Although the Egyptian pharaoh Ramesses II initially fought them off, the raids continued for over a century, as peoples such as the Sherden, Lucca and Peliset destroyed cities. It caused a general collapse, pushing Egypt and Greece into centuries of political and economic chaos. So, red is the Akkadian Empire. the Babylonian Empire and green is the Egyptian Empire I'm left handed so this feels really strange doing this on the right hand <laughs> and then the orange is the Hittite Empire Yeah. 
and lift. This is a, a fist shaped drinking vessel, so it's a cup. <laughs> was produced by the Hittite people, migrants to Anatolia. That's Anatolia. Who formed a large empire at its peak in the mid 14th century BCE. Nomadic visitors from Syria, Canaan are depicted arriving in ancient Egypt on a tomb wall at Beni Hassan, Egypt, dating to around 1700 BCE. A bronze head of Sargon, king of Akkad between 2334 to 2279 BCE, he used forced deportations of conquered to maintain control of his empire. Um, this gold necklace with pendants representing deities showed the wealth and sophistication of ancient Babylonian society by 18th to 17th century BCE. I'm going to leave it there for now. Video at some point reading more of this book. I thought that was a good wee, good wee sample for you. Let me have a look at the back. We become not a melting pot but a beautiful, beautiful mosaic. Different people, different beliefs, different dreams. So said Jimmy Carter. Former United States of America president. Migrations tells the story of human movement throughout centuries, throughout history, and tracks its lasting influence on cultures and societies across the globe. It follows the early humans who enjoyed who journeyed out of Africa some fifty thousand years ago. Those who left family and friends in search of opportunity and adventure in distant lands, and those who have escaped war or famine in search of sanctuary and a better life. Combining striking images with sensitive narrative and Im intimate first-hand accounts, it reveals where our ancestors came from and the ways they shaped the place we call home. David Olusoga OBE is a British Nigerian historian, broadcaster and author and professor of public history at the University of Manchester. His book Black and British A Forgotten History was awarded the Longman History Today Trustees Award and the PEN Hessel Tiltman Prize or Penn Hessel Tiltman Prize. I'm not sure how you say that. Sunday. But we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, take care. Sweet dreams.